my church is using these crummy little cardboard organizers in the children's classrooms. They're pretty bad. They've seen quite a bit of mileage and a few of them are starting to fall apart. I figured I could probably come up with a better solution, so here's what I ended up with. Essentially, it's a cabinet that has a deep drawer in the bottom for some storage. A total of 36 slots for the kids to store their lessons, their drawings, the crafts they work on, or whatever. The whole thing will be on lockable casters for ease of mobility, and I'll even trim it out in some walnut to hide all the plywood edges. Alright, let's see if I can make this thing happen. Now, I'm pretty sure it says in the Bible to love thy neighbor's lumber, and thou shall not steal unless you really need it. So in honoring those commandments, I was able to find everything I needed for this project next door. The trick, though, was getting it into my tiny basement shop and then breaking down these really large sheets. I started by plopping it down on some foam insulation board and then using my track saw to cut it up into more manageable sizes. From there, I could use my table saw to break it down further. But even then, there were some pieces that were just too big and I actually had to move some things around in the shop just to be able to make the cut. But eventually, I got everything cut out and all the pieces of the main carcass to their final dimensions. Now I could swap out my table saw blade with a dado stack. If you're not certain what that is, it's when you put an entire stack of blades into the saw so that you'll die much quicker in the event of an accident. I clamped on a sacrificial fence and then I cut a few rabbits along the edges of some pieces. Now this left a tiny mohawk on the end so I just ran it through again slightly further out to trim it completely off. Then I started getting fancy and I made the cuts pushing forward and then trimmed them as I pulled it back. Next came the dados in the center of the boards. So I measured off the offset and I made the cuts. After the first I could just flip the board around to make the second. Then I put in a flat topped blade to make a bunch of dados for the dividers. I nudged the fence over between each set of cuts being careful to keep them all equally spaced. And in the end I had two sides prepared as well as two double sided partitions created. Before I started gluing things up, I made sure to completely riddle my fingertips with splinters while attempting to sand each of the grooves. Then it was time for assembly. I ran some glue into the dados and I dropped in the mating piece, and then gave it some taparoos to position it into place. I put on some clamps, but to help me hold things squarely, I decided to go ahead and mount on the bottom as well. I added some glue into the rabbits, and then I could just set the whole thing down on top of it. A few more taps and a few more clamps and we were good to go. Next was adding in the partitions on the top of the shelf. I put some glue into the dados and then I used a spacer block underneath to brace things while I beat the snot out of it with the mallet. Once I added some clamping pressure, I could then squeeze them the rest of the way home. On a side note, I applied to be in my church's Sunday morning worship band as the percussion. For my audition, I sent in the following clip that really showcases my skills. Now I haven't heard back from them just yet, but I'm pretty sure that I blew their minds. Once things were dry, I could then take off all the clamps. Next, I needed to create a notch around the whole carcass to inlay the back panel. Then, this rabbiting bit in my trim router made the process pretty simple. Now since the bit is round, I had to do a little bit of some chisel work to square out the corners. Now for the back panel itself, I'm just using a quarter inch sheet of plywood. 
This cabinet is already going to be heavy enough as it is. I don't need to add even more weight by using anything thicker for the back. And once I had it cut down to size, I could spread some glue and then drop it into place. And then add some clamps until it's dried. Then because I made the rabbits a touch wide on the sides and a bit deep in the back, I could use a flush trim bit to make everything perfectly even. Now for a bit of sanding to tone down the excitement level of this video. Next we can make the drawer. I start by putting a clean edge on some half inch plywood, then I cut out all the pieces that we'll need. I cut them to length over at the miter saw And then I could start to put them together. And to do that, I'm just using butt joints, glue, and a few brad nails. Nothing fancy. This will be plenty strong enough and I don't need to go overboard. Now speaking of going overboard, this nail gun, it can be a lot of fun. <laughs> to install the drawer slides, I made a 4 inch spacer to get them to the correct height as well as another spacer to offset them the correct distance back into the drawer cavity. Once I had them in just the right spot, I drove in a few screws to secure them to the sides. Then to find the spot for the rails, I made some more spacers to hold the drawer at just the right height, and then I just made a mark at the center of the drawer slide. Then when I pulled the drawer out, I could set a combination square to that same distance and then draw a line down the sides of the drawer. Then spotting the line through the screw holes on the rail, I could secure each one of them down. Testing the fit, and looks good. For the drawer face, I start by finding the center point. Then this jig I made hooks over the top edge of the board and it gets lined up with my mark. I trace out where the handle will be cut out and then I can make an embarrassment out of myself as I completely mutilate this piece with a jigsaw. Fortunately, I can plop the jig back down on top, clamp it down, and then use a router to clean up my disgraceful hack job. Now to actually mount the face to the drawer itself, I used some playing cards and I shimmed the sides until it was centered perfectly and tightly. Then I squeezed the clamp as hard as my little girly muscles would let me. I gently removed the cards and then I carefully slid the drawer out. Now I could drill, countersink, and drive in some screws to hold on the face. Nice. Next, I needed to cut down some masonite hardboard to use for all the dividers. This was also the first time I've ever turned on my table saw using my toes. Probably not something you'd brag about, but this was quite an accomplishment for me. Once I cut all the pieces lengthwise, I could then turn them sideways and cross cut them to their final dimension. And now I can slide them into the cabinet. I wanted to hide the edges of the plywood on the front and the back of the piece with some trim. And I figured this would be a perfect way for me to use up a particularly gnarly looking piece of walnut that I had. This board had some good character but also a lot of defects so I couldn't really use it for anything else. I cleaned it up a bit, put a flat edge on it over at the joiner, and then I could cut it down into a bunch of thin strips on the table saw. Then I rotated each one of those strips onto its side and I secured down my magnetic feather board and I cut out a bunch of 1 8 inch thick pieces that I could use for trim. And I ended up getting quite a few pieces. Now to put them on, I'd just run a bead of glue and then I'd use tiny pieces of painter's tape to secure it down and to take out any warp or twist that it might have. This seemed to work pretty well, and it made adding the trim pretty easy. 
To address the overhangs, I just used a flush trim saw to nip off the ends, and once everything had dried thoroughly, I could sand it all flush and get rid of any squeeze out. Then the cabinet gets flipped over so that I could trim out the back. However, this time I couldn't use tape. Instead, I had to use clamps every few inches so that I could mount things straight and accurately. And by the time I was done, I had used just about every clamp that I own. But it worked, and once it was dry, I could take all the clamps off. At this point, I could cut off any of the overhanging trim pieces, give the entire thing a good sanding, and do a thorough last minute inspection before I plopped it down onto the cart and wheeled it back into my finish room. Oh, you didn't know that I had a finish room? Well, I don't. But what I do have is a bunch of cheap rolled up plastic drop cloths that I taped to the ceiling. Then, whenever I need to spray some finish, I can pull some strings and drop it all the way down, making the perfect little kill room. Uh, finish room. I spray down three coats of some satin finished polyurethane to give it all the protection that it'll need, and I sand it between coats with some 220 to keep the surfaces real smooth to the touch. Afterwards, I made this little jig to help me easily and quickly find all the mounting locations for the casters. I just hook it over a corner, poke a tiny hole into the bottom of each of the locations, and then finish drilling out each one without the jig. Then I can just center the holes and mount the caster using a screw and a washer. And hopefully the good lord will forgive me, but I did find a use for a flathead screw in one of these locations. <laughs> and the rest of them went on pretty quick. Then I can finally lower this thing down onto the floor and take a good look at it. It turned out great. I really like how the walnut trim makes it look like the dividers are almost floating inside. It rolls around super smoothly on the casters and the ease of the storage drawer at the bottom is real nice and will give the Sunday school teachers a great place to stick some unruly children. I was super pleased with it and very excited to share a picture of it with the church and get their thoughts. So I shot them over a quick text. I was really happy they liked it, but then they told me they wanted four of them. I needed to make three more. Well, at this point, I did what any woodworker would do, and I pulled out my wood shop keyboard. I simply focused on the finished product, and I hit Control C, followed by Control V. It worked. Now I just need two more. All right, easy enough. Now to deliver them. My friend Tim came over and helped me lift each one into the trailer and to secure it down. I checked how tight the straps were and I said the obligatory dad phrase, well, that's not gonna go anywhere. And then we hauled them over to the church. Once we got there, we could get them unloaded and positioned into their respective classrooms. We could finally get rid of that junky cardboard organizer and could wheel in the nice new wooden ones and lock them into place. Also, I ended up fastening two of them together in a clamshell design. I used a piano hinge down one side and I put a window sash lock on the other so that they could be closed together. This way it could be used as a mobile table or a work surface, or unfolded and used as a large organizer in one of the large classrooms. This was a fun project and I hope you enjoyed watching the video. If you did, and you think I've earned it, consider subscribing and leaving a comment down below. Now, if you really enjoyed it and would like to support the channel, click the Join button and become a contributing member. There's multiple tiers and perks to choose from, but mainly, you'll be making it possible for me to continue making videos like this one. Hey, thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. The battery is dead.
I get this in there? No, I can't get it in there. Oh, wait. Kidding me? What's the deal here? There we go. Well, that's what's it hitting? Oh no! I got glue in the groove. <laughs>